Whoa, a dragon fist? Does that mean I can two-hand it and have two of the... Uh, wait, what? Ye cannot have two dragon hands, for I only had one! What if I kill you twice? What? I am the one who shall be more dragon than man. That's a spicy fucking meatball. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, the first weapon that I saw in this game that truly made me stop and consider building around it completely was the Grafted Dragon Fist Weapon, a boss weapon from Godric the Grafted. Without hesitation, I purchased it, I put it on, I tried to put it on two hands as you can with every other fist weapon in the game, and I was immediately incredibly disappointed that you can't. However, if you get a second Grafted Dragon Fist, either by killing Godric early on in New Game Plus, or by getting a friend to drop one for for you, then you can equip one on each hand and properly use the Power Stance Fist weapon moveset, allowing this weapon to not be stuck as a secondary component, but instead become the entire focus of your build, your main weapon. You get dragons for hands, people! And as if that wasn't enough reason to be interested with patch 1.04, this got even more effective, better in the game. The weapon skill became faster firing with an increase in cast speed. The unique weapon skill of this Dragon Fist fires up a burst of flame with an uppercut component as well. An enemy will take damage from the physical movement of the fist, from the initial landing of the flame on top of them, and then any time that they walk through a different patch of fire on the floor, they will take another tick. With a big boss, that really adds up fast. With a smaller foe, they will actually more often than not get knocked straight up into the sky by the uppercut itself, and then they will move back through the fire on the floor to get back over to you. Not to mention, the skill has a ton of hyper armor going on in the windup. This armor that I'm wearing is thematic and fashionable but not particularly heavy, not a crazy amount of natural poise. In PvP, this thing can be tough to use, fist weapons are super fast to power stance and the actual power stance damage of this build isn't bad at all, but the range is just non-existent, and as a result, the skill is your best bet, especially with the poise it has that I mentioned earlier. If you can get someone in close range to you, then bop this off in their face, you'll come off ahead in that trade with 9 out of 10 things that aren't called Lion's Claw. But if you know this weapon, then you know it's Ash of War, and you know it has tiny range with the main portion, which makes it easy to play around and dodge. However, hilariously, some people just don't recognize that the fire it leaves on the ground still does damage after the fact. Oh, that has got to hurt. In PvE, I'm not gonna try and tell you this build will one-shot bosses, or that it will make the entire game feel non-threatening, because that, that just isn't the truth. This isn't that kind of build. This is, however, entirely capable of killing anything in the game with dragons for free freaking hands! On top of this, the stats that it has lets you really dig into it all thematically. While for the most part, I am personally sticking to the dragon fists and the weapon skill and the footage as it is the real reason to do this as a main build. I cannot understate though how strong some of these incantations are with our setup, as well as extra options for when a pair of fist weapons might feel a little bit rough, which honestly will happen sometimes. They hit fast, but they have really low reach and sometimes you just need another option in a particularly tough situation. As such, we stay thematic and grab some really strong fire incantations, as well as the fitting dragon incantations. After all, if we have dragons for hands, why should we not have a dragon for a head as well? As far as how this all comes together to do what it's doing then, the grafted dragon fist has natural fire damage and the weapon skill itself is heavily fire damage based. As a result, fire scorpion charm talisman is just an instant inclusion for a 12.5% damage increase in exchange for a loss in damage negation. When using that, and in combination with some of our incantations, the weapon skill gets actually somewhat nasty as far as actual damage, so why not throw in the Shard of Alexander Talisman which boosts the damage of weapon skills by 15% as well. Past that, th there isn't much to up the damage of specifically the weapon skill, so we can move on to the more supplementary part of the build, the incantations. And so, the Phlox Canvas Talisman is a great choice, boosting incantation damage by 8%, allowing our secondary options to have a lot more oomph to them whenever 
whenever we turn in to use them. And then finally is really a flexible slot. If you feel really comfortable with survivability and either want to walk into the fight and spam the Ash of War until something dies, or just abuse the safety of ranged incantations to stay at full health, then the Ritual Sword Talisman is fantastic, boosting your damage by 10% when you're at maximum health. Otherwise, use one of the bevy of defensive talismans instead to keep yourself safer depending on the specific damage type you expect to take. As well, to boost your general output, we have our Flask of Wondrous Physic buffs, the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier, which boosts fire damage by 20% for three minutes. And then the other mixture is somewhat of a three slot, but I recommend either the Personal Poise Boosting One or the one that makes it easier to break enemies poise, depending on the encounter at hand. And then before going over the incantations themselves, let's talk about the seal that we use to cast them and then the two seals that we just hold decoratively in our other hand to make them stronger. The Giant Seal boosts Giant's Fire and Fire Monk incantations, which applies both to O Flame and Giant's Flame Take The, which are both ones that we're using. And for some reason, having one of these equipped in each of your hands applies double the bonus, making it a total of 40% extra damage to these incantations if you have two. Of course, in a single playthrough, you can only get one of them unless you have a friend drop one for you. But this is more just a neat little trick that you can do to boost it even further. It still works great with just the one seal anyways. However, you definitely should get the Dragon Communion seal too. While our stats won't scale well with this seal at all, we can take advantage of the fact that it buffs Dragon Incantations by 15% by equipping it with our right hand while casting the incantation itself with the higher scaling Giant Seal in our left hand, double dipping the higher damage seal with the particularly affected bonus. As a result of this, neither your Dragon Communion seal or your second Giant Seal actually need to be upgraded at all. The passive bonus never changes if you upgrade it, and you aren't casting through them as a source, so just having it equipped is more than enough. The actual incantations themselves, then, are Golden Vow. This one is less dragon thematic, and more just we are over the faith threshold to use this buff, and if you don't, you're just missing out on 15% damage that lasts for a very long period of 80 seconds, and also 10% damage negation, too. It's just too good to ignore. Flame Grant Me Strength, which boosts your physical and fire damage by 20% each, which affects our weapon attacks themselves, the weapon skills specifically, and then also every one of our fire damaging incantations. O Flame, a Fire Monk spell, which has the charged version of Catch Flame, a beginner faith spell. You can also use Catch Flame too, but it isn't boosted by our seals. And then we have Giant's Flame Take The, which is just a giant explosive charged fireball. Are you noticing a theme with these so far? Aside from the buffs, of course, we are not just any dragon, we are a fire dragon, and so we must be able to spew from our dragony hands the most powerful flames imaginable. However, we are still a dragon specifically, of course. And while we have dragons for hands, sometimes you just want a dragon's hand. Bam! Dragon Claw! Turning your hand into a dragon's hand and then swiping two times with a repeated input. Dragon Fire as well, which turns your head into a dragon's head, then spews out flames in front of you, and then also a keel's flame, which of course is extremely similar to the Dragon Fire with the main bonus of instead being able to use it mid-air, so you can sort of set yourself up to attack things from above if you do it purposefully. As for the attributes that you will want to make this function, 40 Vigor is an absolute minimum, 20 Mind, enough Endurance to medium roll with whichever armor that you choose to wear, though the lore accurate one would definitely be the Drake Knight armor, which you can wear with the rest of this equipment at pretty much base stamina. 40 strength at least, 14 dexterity to use the weapons, intelligence doesn't matter, dragons don't need brains. 50 faith is the soft cap for faith affecting weapon skills, which is our main use for faith, so we'll have a hard stop there. As well, you need 15 arcane exactly to use all of our dragon incantations. From there, put your points in based on how comfortable you are with your health bar. If you want more Vigor, go more Vigor. If you want more damage, go with Strength up to 55, and then once you hit 55 Strength, instead boost your Dexterity as far as it will go, which for me, in the footage level that I was at, was 27. With that, you have the power required to become a great Dragon of Fire yourself, carving your name into the annals of Dragon history, which is only a slight mispronunciation away from a very different meaning. As for where to get each of the things to make this function, the weapon itself
itself is of course traded for with the Godric Remembrance. The giant seal is in the giant conquering hero's grave at the top of the mountaintop of the giants. When you get to the room with the troll, drop off of the bridge to find a fire prelate. Defeat him or ignore him and get the seal itself from the corpse on the side of the room. The dragon communion seal is found right near the beginning of the game in the fringe folk hero's grave right under the first step site of grace. Open the door with two stone sword keys and then progress in through the dungeon and instead of down, go up the ramp itself to find an enemy. Defeat them and they will drop this seal. The wondrous physic mixture for boosting fire damage comes from the minor air tree in the eastern cliffs of Liurnia. And as far as incantations go, Dragon Claw and Dragon Fire come from the Church of Dragon Communion in Western Limgrave in exchange for one dragon heart each. And you can actually go get Dragon Fire as well from the Cathedral of Dragon Communion instead in Southern Caled, which is where you can also purchase Akil's Flame in exchange for two dragon hearts after killing Flying Dragon Akil in the Big Lake in Limgrave. Golden Vow comes from the Corpse Stench Shack on the eastern side of Mount Gelmir. Flame Grant Me Strength is located behind Fort Gale and Caled between a couple of spinny zoomy shooty shooties. O Flame is purchasable once you have the Fire Monk Prayer Book, which you can find on a corpse in the Fire Monk camp that is located here in Southern Liurnia. And finally for these, Giant's Flame Take Thee is purchasable after giving a Faith Vendor the Giant's Prayer Book, which is in a chest at the very top of the Guardian's Garrison in the top of the mountaintop of the Giants, behind a guy who drops a particularly fun shield, which is also fire damage, as it so happens. The Fire Scorpion Charm Talisman is up in Fort Laid by the Seedwater Terminus Site of Grace, head in through the front door, past the Fire Prelate, and into the building. Up the U-shaped stairs, and then up to the western side and jump over to a wooden platform to loot this talisman off of a corpse. The Shard of Alexander Talisman comes from the Alexander quest line. the first necessary step being to find him in the desert after the Star Scourge Radon boss fight, then talk to him again in the lava pools near the Seedwater Terminus Site of Grace in Mount Gelmir, and then finally find him in Crumbling Fair Missoula near the Dragon Temple Lift Site of Grace, and fight him for the right to use his insides as a personal power-up. The Flox Canvas Talisman is somewhat of a special unlock. It requires you to complete the Millicent quest line, which starts at Gowrie's Shack in Caled, but doesn't come from the quest line itself. Instead, once Millicent's story is over, either by finishing the quest line or by, well, murdering Millicent yourself early for some reason, then the man who was at Gowrie's Shack will be hunched over sad. And if you kill him when he's in this position, he will drop the Flox Canvas Talisman for you. And then finally, if you want the Ritual Sword Talisman, it is dropped by the boss of the Lux Ruins near the Air Tree Gazing Hill, Site of Grace, in the Altus Plateau. Oh, and if you really want to dig into the thematic fashion like I have, it's not required by any means, it doesn't actually boost your damage, but the Drake Knight Armor itself from the Dragon Temple Rooftop, Site of Grace, drop down and head to the roof southeast, drop again, and then turn around to drop down once further to find a secret path leading back around the corner to an elevator. Before activating the elevator, however, walk past it to find a chest containing the armor set. And that just about covers it. Everything you need to truly make this build shine. Not just the weapon skill itself, but how to turn yourself truly into a totally viable build based around this that you can bring into any fight in the game. Having options that you can switch to situationally depending on what you are trying to take down. And you get to have freaking dragons for freaking hands! Dual wielding them as fist weapons! Like the most literal interpretation of a martial arts movie that I've ever seen. I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been the Flame Dragon Apostle build, empowering you to live out your dreams as a dragon who can breathe fire either out of your face or either one of your hand mouths. Yes, I said hand mouths. Are you going to give this build a go, or maybe even just take a bit of inspiration and work the grafted dragon fist weapon itself as an offhand into your general rotation? I hope it has spurred your anticipation to play more Elden Ring in some sort of way. Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye